Welcome back, folks, to another class guide. I'm Frizz, and today we're going to be covering the basics of the monk class. Monks are super versatile and incredibly flexible that can pride itself at being the best at unarmed and unarmored combat in the entire system. While fighters might have a higher attack modifier with unarmed strikes, monks can more than make up the difference with other abilities to increase their effectiveness. In this video, I'm going to be going over the basic proficiencies and statistics of the class, as well as all of the monk class features. In the next part of this guide, I'm going to be going over all of the different class feats. I can't say for certain when that video will be out, since there's over a hundred monk feats, but it'll be in the next couple of weeks at the minimum, so hang tight. Before we do dive into the mechanics, though, I feel like it's important to talk about what makes monks unique. First, monks don't actually have a subclass. They're one of the few classes that don't have a decision that you make at level 1 that has lasting implications for how that class will play. For example, rogues have rackets that change what proficiencies they have and basically the entire way that you play the character. Monks don't have those. And that means that by their nature, they're very flexible. You can basically build a monk however you would like. Additionally, monks just have a large focus on flexibility in combat. They can be incredibly mobile and just have fantastic action compression. And that's actually something to point out, is that monks have good action compression, where pretty much every other martial character except for fighters have action like taxes that they have to use to be effective. For example, for a ranger to be you know, particularly effective, they have to use Hunt Prey. S say, a Barbarian also has to use an action to Rage to be able to be at maximum effectiveness. Monks don't have that, and actually they have special actions that they get access to to make them more effective by giving them extra actions, pretty much, which is insanely useful. The last thing about Monks is that they have fantastic defensive abilities in pretty much every single type of defense, and additionally, they can fill pretty much any role, although almost all monks will be frontline characters. Now let's get down to talking about the basic proficiencies and statistics of the class. Just like pretty much every frontline martial character, you get 10 hit points every level just like pretty much everyone else except barbarians. Additionally, you get to choose strength or dexterity for your key ability score. I'd personally recommend getting an 18 in one of them at level 1, and you can certainly make effective strength and dexterity focused monks. Just if you do make a strength based monk, then I recommend still having a good dexterity, because since you are not going to be wearing armor, you do rely a lot on your dexterity for your AC. and. Despite the fact that you're going to have a good proficiency modifier for your unarmored defense, you still do need dexterity to not get hit and crit constantly. Monks start as trained in deception, which increases to expert at level 5 with the alertness class feature. This is, unfortunately, as high as your perception will ever get, but monks do make up for it with having great proficiencies in other places, so it's not the end of the world. Additionally, monks start trained in 4 plus your intelligence modifier skills at level 1. This honestly isn't a huge amount of skills uh, compared to what some other classes can get access to, but it's certainly a very workable amount. You start as trained in the monk class DC, and this advances to expert proficiency at level 9, and later to master proficiency at level 17. This is a pretty good rate to improve your class DC proficiency, and and this is critical here, is that monks have a lot of options to use class DC that are very useful. So you're going to actually get a lot of use out of your class DC, unlike some classes like, say, the Swashbuckler that has one use for their class DC in the entire class. So it's going to be great. I'm also going to be pointing it out here. Monks can get access to focus spells called key spells, and whenever you pick a key spell, you pick either divine or occult magic, and then you become trained in the spell attack rules and spell DC of that tradition, and your proficiency with that tradition is based on your class DC proficiency. So basically, at level 9 you become an expert in that tradition, and at level 17 you become a master. This is important to point out because 
this is actually a pretty great rate at becoming proficient in those types of DCs, which means if you grab a spell casting archetype, your proficiency with the spells from that archetype is going to be a bit faster than normal for grabbing a spell casting archetype. It's just something to keep in mind. Moving on though, monks are trained in simple weapons and unarmed attacks, but you become an expert in both at level 5 with the expert strikes feature. At level 13, this advances to master proficiency, and all this is really standard for martial classes. This is the normal levels where adv proficiency advances if you're not a fighter, and while not being trained in martial weapons is unfortunate, there are still some great options in simple weapons, and you can always pick up a ancestry weapon feat if you want to get access to some more interesting options. Generally though, you're going to want to be using arm strikes. Monks begin the game untrained in all armor, but they start as an expert in unarmored defense. Monks are genuinely the only class to start with an expert proficiency in their AC, and it helps make up for not being able to wear armor. And armor always gives a bonus to AC, so it is kind of an outside, but the proficiency really does make up for it. I'd really recommend having at least a 14 or a 16 dexterity because it matters so much. But at level 13, you do get to be a master in unarmored defense with the Graceful Mastery class feature. And at level 17, your unarmored defense becomes legendary with the Graceful Legend class feature. Only champions can also get their AC to be legendary. And while champions are probably going to have a higher AC due to probably wearing heavy armor and using a shield, monks more than make up for it in other ways. Despite the fact that champions will have a probably better AC, you are still going to have a better AC than probably every other class in the game, so it's nothing to scoff at. Now, I decided to not talk about the saving throws until the end, since monk saving throws are actually unique in Pathfinder 2e. Monks start as an expert in all saving throws, which is of course fantastic. And at level 17, you choose your first path to perfection. You now choose one saving throw, and then your proficiency with it increases to master. In addition, successes become critical successes with it. Your second path to perfection begins at level 11, where you choose a different saving throw to increase to master and get the same benefits as your first path to perfection. Finally, at level 15, you choose either one of your two previously selected saving throws to increase to legendary. Additionally, when you roll a critical failure with a chosen save, it is now a failure instead, and if you get a failure on an effect that deals damage, you only take half damage instead of probably the normal amount of damage. The actual benefits that you get from all of your path to perfections are about the same as other classes, but other classes don't get to pick and choose which saves they want to increase like monks can. If you want my personal opinion, then you should probably choose whatever makes sense for your character, but if you're just trying to look at it from an objective standpoint, reflex saves almost always just do damage, while fortitude and will saves are often much more directly crippling. They might be, you know, mind control or death effects or poison or disease, so they're generally a bit more dangerous and they are more likely to hurt the rest of your party if you fail, so generally I would say that will saves are the most important, then fortitude saves, then reflex saves. But really, there's nothing wrong with choosing reflex saves to be your best save. Just go with what makes sense for your character, and what makes for sense for your campaign. If you're playing in a horror campaign, maybe will saves are the most important, because you're going to be facing a lot of effects that deal with will saves. Now let's move on to class features, and I'm not going to be talking about class features that every single class gets, like, say, ancestry feats or skill feats or weapon specialization, since every class gets to that, and this is a monk-specific guide. The first class feature to talk about is Powerful Fist, which becomes available at level 1, and it makes your unarmed strikes much, much more dangerous. Your unarmed strikes damage die is now a 1d6 instead of 1d4, and you don't take a penalty for dealing lethal damage with a non-lethal unarmed attack, which is probably going to be almost all of your unarmed attacks. Basically, your unarmed strikes are even more dangerous now, and more damaging, and 
these fists are made for killing. Flurry Blows is probably the most defining class feature for a monk. It is a single action with a flourish trait that is super, super simple. When you use the action, you make two unarmed strikes. If they both hit the same creature, then you combine their damage for the purposes of resistances and weaknesses. While you can't do this more than once in a turn due to the flourish trait, and your multiple attack penalty still increases as normal, this is insanely good and allows for a ton of flexibility. You can now run up to someone, hit them twice, and then run away, which forces them to use actions to approach you. Basically, playing a monk kind of feels like you're constantly being quickened, and you can only use the extra action to punch. Fully of Blows is available to other classes as a level 10 feat in the monk multi-class archetype, and it is, at that point, worth a 10th level feat to get. You get this at level 1 for free. Allow that to sink in. You are getting what is effectively a 10th level class feat at level 1 for free. This is insanely good. I'm going to point it out here that it is going to suck that you combine the damage for the purposes of weaknesses, because it means you can't, say, apply one good damage on all of your attacks and then really mess up demons, but combining it for the purposes of resistances is fantastic. Mystic Strikes is a, honestly, pretty boring class feature that you get at level 3, though it might have some uses. Basically, you can now channel your energy through your body in such a way to make your unarmed strikes magical for the purposes of resistances and the like. You still have to buy hand wraps with mighty blows to be able to get a bonus to accuracy and damage from having magic fists though, which by level 3 you're almost certainly going to have at least a plus 1 hand wraps with mighty blows. But this can be helpful if you get stripped of your weaponry or just be in a situation where you can't have your gear. Incredible Movement is a pretty iconic ability for a monk, and it basically just gives monks the best mobility in the entire game. Starting at level 3, whenever you're not wearing armor, you get a plus 10 foot status bonus to your speed. Already, that's fantastic, but it actually gets better as you level up, as it increases by 5 feet for every 4 levels past 3rd. At level 19, a monk could be well over twice as fast as every other character in the party, which allows for so much tactical thinking in combat. Maneuvering around people, getting where you want to be, and say getting into a flank has never been easier. I have said this many, many times on this channel, but mobility should never be underestimated and can be incredibly, incredibly powerful. The next interesting class feature that we haven't already gone over is available at level 9, and it's called Metal Strikes. Basically, you manage to get your body to feel like metal to the spiritual senses, and all of your unarmed attacks are now treated as cold iron and silver. This helps out a ton whenever you're fighting things like outsiders and werewolves, so you might get some limited use out of it depending on your campaign. Or you might be in a campaign where you're fighting devils constantly and then you're going to be getting a ton of extra damage out of this. Animantine Strikes is the next interesting class feature, and it comes at level 17. Remember, there's a bunch of proficiency upgrades between level 17 and level 9, so I'm not skipping, like, half the class for no reason. And Adamantine Strikes is basically just an upgrade to Metal Strikes. Now your fists also count as Adamantine, which allows you to start punching through walls with impunity as you can start ignoring hardness. There is something a bit unclear here to ask your GM about, though, since there is actually different types of adamantine with different effects. I personally count this class feature as giving you access to high-level adamantine, which is a level 17 version, which makes sense for the level of the class feature, but it's up to your GM, since the feat doesn't actually say what level of adamantine your fist count as. The final monk class feature is pretty stupid with how good it is. Perfect Form becomes available at level 19, and basically means that before stuff can throw you off, your form is always perfect. On the first strike of a turn, if you roll lower than a 10, then you get a 10 instead. Since this is a fortune effect, it can't stack with other fortune effects, but it's still insanely good. By this level, rolling a 10 is almost certainly a hit, unless you're fighting something really above your level. And, and getting a hit is almost always better than missing, so it is an amazing increase to your consistency. It makes a high level monk's damage pretty amazingly consistent. Overall, I 
absolutely love the monk. There are a ton of ways to build a monk to make them super interesting, and I feel like there might be more ways to build a monk than possibly any other class other than a fighter. Although the three main ways I can think of are either focusing on dexterity or strength, or even focusing on focus spells. Focusing on focus spells or key spells won't work until probably about level 6 as like a true specialization, because by level 6 you'll have access to a good amount of focus points and focus spells for different situations, but it still works pretty dang well. Strength and Dexterity monks are a lot more straightforward, with a Strength monk having better damage but a worse AC, while a Dexterity monk has worse damage but a better defensive ability. Either way that you choose to build a monk, I really recommend having a decent Strength and Dexterity though, since they're always going to be important, because monks are probably always going to at some point fall into being in melee. Thanks for watching this. Uh, this video and the next one are pretty big undertakings for me, so I hope that you enjoyed it and were able to learn something. The monk is a super fun class that you can build in pretty much any way you want, so I hope that you got a better understanding of how the class works from my guide. Hopefully I'll be able to get out the second part of this guide either next week or the one after that. So if you'd like to see it, then liking, commenting, and subscribing down below are legitimately the best ways to get YouTube to know that you'd like to see it. It's not purely me self-promoting by saying that. I'm not joking. Anyways, until I see you next, live a wonderful life.